In this video, I'm going to be building a simple stats handler in C-sharp that will use the data on a scriptable object to alter the attributes of a game agent. The data contains a name, speed, height, and color for the agent. If you missed the earlier video on creating the scriptable object template, check the link in the top right or in the video description below. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is right click on my scripts folder and create a new C-sharp script called stats handler. I'll then double click and wait for Visual Studio to open. Once Visual Studio is open, I'll add the library unityengine.ai to access the nav mesh types. I'll also remove the start and update functions as I won't be using them. With that done, I'm going to add a private variable of type agent stats and call it stats. This will hold a reference to the scriptable object. Now in my use case, there's no need for the scriptable object to be public, but I do want to be able to access the variable in the inspector. So I'll add the attribute serialize field so the variable can be seen and used in the inspector. With this done, I can save the file and go back to Unity. Once Unity is done compiling, I can add an instance of the stats handler script to each of the c -sharp agents. I'll drag in a scriptable object into the stats slot and then head back to Visual Studio. Now for my simple use case, I want the stats to be used when the object is enabled. For your case, you may want to do this with a start function, a custom function, or maybe even an update function, depending on how the data is being used. So I'll add an onEnable function to get started. Then inside the function, I'll use an if statement to first do a quick check as to whether the stats variable is null. This prevents an error from being thrown later in the script if you forgot to drop in the scriptable object in the inspector. If the stats is not null, then I'll use the data in the scriptable object to update the agent's attributes. First, I'll update the name of the game object. So to set the name of the agent, I'll set this.gameObject.name equal to stats.underscore_name. Remembering that the underscore refers to the name data and not the name of the scriptable object in the project folder. Now I'm a big fan of using the keyword this, and it's not always necessary, but for me it makes the code more clear and easier to read. Moving on to the second stat, which is the speed of the nav mesh agent. I'll set this by getting the nav mesh agent that is attached to the game object. Now often when I'm coding in C-sharp, I'll cache the components that I'm using for later use. But in the case of the nav mesh agent, I'm only accessing it once. So I'm going to modify the speed on the same line as getting the component, and I won't cache the reference. The get component command provides a reference to the nav mesh agent, so adding a dot speed after it will allow me to set the speed equal to stats.speed. By now, hopefully the pattern of what I'm doing is becoming clear, or at least clearer. In general, accessing the data on a scriptable object is fairly straightforward. So moving on, the next thing I want to adjust is the height or the scale of the y-axis of the agent. I'll do this by setting this.transform.localScale equal to a new vector 3. I'll set the x and z components of the new vector 3 to 1, and I'll use stats.height to set the y component. The last piece to change is the color or material of the object. This is done on the mesh renderer component. So just like with the nav mesh agent, I'm not going to cache a reference to the mesh renderer. I'm going to set the value of the material on the same line as getting the component. Now when doing this, you may notice that there are a couple similar options, a dot material and dot materials. The singular option references the first material, while the plural option references the entire array of materials. Since my object only has one material, I want the singular option, and I'll set it equal to stats.color. With this done, I'm going to save the file, go back to Unity, and give it a little bit of time to compile. Then on the second agent, I'm going to make sure I have the second copy of the scriptable object so that each c -sharp agent has a different data set. I can then press play and see the results. The agents have adjusted their appearance based on the data. The agent's name, height, and color have all changed. If I open the nav mesh agent component, you can see that the speeds have also been adjusted. Now there's one more piece that I showed in the previous video when I created the scriptable object template, and that would be a random wander script. I created one in c -sharp and another in Bolt. Those scripts don't make use of the scriptable object or directly access the data on them. But if you'd like to see a video showing how to create a simple random wander effect, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video or better yet found it useful. If you did, please think about hitting the subscribe or like buttons. If you want to go further in supporting the channel, check out the links to my Discord and Patreon pages. So until next time, happy game designing.